Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday and welcome to another episode of Live Coffee Talk. I'm Michelle Kui. I'm a confidence and leadership coach, and I work with negative self-talkers to get them to shift from where they are now to where they want to be in a more and enjoy more personal and professional life. So today I am honored and I am delighted to have a beautiful, amazing, and brave woman to join me today during this coffee talk. And her name is Deanna Beckett. Deanna is an Amazon best-selling author of the book, Cultivating Your Character, who help entrepreneur gain the freedom they seek, mental freedoms, financial freedom, and emotional freedom. Oh, what a beautiful thing. She earned the Associate of Science degree in engineering, followed her Bachelor's of Science degree in business administration. Deanna is a professional speaker and health and freedom coach. Deanna worked 19 years as a director sales business owner while homeschooling two children. After a successful career helping women building confidence, Deanna now coaches upcoming entrepreneur on how to succeed with excellence. You can listen to her actually from a radio station at The Breeze at 97.9 in the afternoon. She was born and raised in the uh, Paris states of North Dakota. Deanna learned the importance of hard work, fun and friend and she called she has called the black hill of um uh south dakota home for 24 years now and please join me with a warm welcome deanna beckett hi deanna good morning thanks for having me how are you i'm doing great thank you so much for coming to the show i was reading through all your bio and i was reading the uh book and the description of the book, I just, I am just so blown away by the amount of achievement that you have gone through. And, you know, I think our viewer would love, love to learn more about your journey and what inspired you to write the book and also becoming a coach. Certainly, I'd be uh, happy to share my journey. And it's, it's, I want, I want to say it's funny, not funny, haha, but more interesting that, uh, you know, we have all these accolades and, um, you know, you've had all this success. But, you know, a lot of us are, you know, walking through this time of pandemic being on our own. And isn't it amazing how our mental shift has uh, really, um, gotten us down i don't know because you know you 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 make me sound so great and my mental goes well really am i i, I don't know i'm just a you know average ordinary person but uh you know when, when you look back on on what you have achieved what you've done and and then give yourself a pat on the back for for just doing that then we kind of step up our our mental attitude but uh, a little bit of my my journey like you said, I was raised in the uh, state of North Dakota and uh, moved to South Dakota 25 years ago now. <clears throat> I forgot to update my dates, but uh, uh, born and raised in um, the rural areas. And uh, it's not like I had a, a horrible upbringing, um, but um, I was raised in a German community, not, uh, not knocking anybody in the German community, but uh, a lot of... Um, how would I explain it? Not a lot of hugs, um, you know, not a lot of uh, accolades and affirmations. And so I went tough through love. high school, tough love. Yes, thank you for that. But I went through uh, high school, just kind of, you know, plugging along and I hit college and uh, kind of went wild and crazy. And uh, my, my uh, low self-confidence made me uh, go chase after boys and parties and uh, drinking and doing that whole uh, gamut of stuff, which, you know, a lot of people are still doing today. But uh, when I uh, got to college, I had a boyfriend and then with that low self-confidence, it was all about me. And I didn't really focus on anybody else. And of course, that, uh, you know, deteriorated that relationship. And then all of a sudden, I was single again. So then I started chasing and, and uh, drinking and partying. And uh, all of a sudden, it's, it, it's kind of funny, we say all of a sudden, but it was the, the habits and the steps that led us there. But all of a sudden, I discovered I was pregnant. And I, I tell the story about um, how I was a nanny in Boston uh, the year before, uh, uh, or the, excuse me, the year after that I was doing all the drinking and carousing. And uh, 
I was not a kid person at all. And all of a sudden now I found myself pregnant and I went, what am I going to do? I don't do kids. And so when I got back to college after that summer in Boston, I, I thought I had to, uh, you know, make a decision right then and there. And I kind of went through some steps. What are my options? I could have had a had an abortion out in Boston, uh, could have tucked it away and hidden it. But uh, I knew that wasn't the right choice for me or um, or the baby. So I actually walked through um, adoption. And uh, eventually I had to tell my parents. And that was the hardest thing going home to my little farmhouse and saying, mom, dad, I'm pregnant and uh, walking through that. And mom actually uh, offered to keep the baby. And I said, that's not fair for you or the baby. So we walked through the whole birth together and uh, the adoption process together. And we said goodbye until, you know, we both grew up. So that, you know, you would think um, walking through something like that, it would do a complete 180 in your life. Oh, no because I had those bad habits ingrained in me. And I still wanted that attention, that focus on me because my self-worth was really low. So I kept, you know, going and chasing after her and partying, but I had a little bit of wisdom in that experience um, of knowing, you know, better choices. But uh, eventually, um, you know, my faith brought me to uh, move to a different state, get out of that uh, circle of friends. And uh, not that the move was the magical thing, but uh, I met my future husband and uh, settled in, settled down. And uh, we eventually had two kids. And like I said, you know, I wasn't a kid person. And all of a sudden we have two kids. And then I decided to homeschool them. That's what the kicker is. It's like, uh, what? Now you're spending 24 seven with them, but uh, now they're 21 and 19. And I look back and, and uh, sometimes the kids go, ah, oh, mom, why did you homeschool us? We didn't, you know, get to do this. We didn't get to do that. And I went, that was the choice we did, but man, we have a better relationship today. So I always encourage people who are, you know, facing homeschooling right now or virtual learning online, that kids are at home, you know, take that time to develop the relationships and get to know your kids and get outside and have fun and play because uh, all of a sudden they're grown up and they're gone. And uh, both my kids are, are, uh, are, are launching soon, but um, you know, what I've learned coming through, um, you know, the adoption and, uh, you know, raising kids and, and I walk through uh, part of that adoption story in my book uh, is, and then after uh, I got married, I decided to, you know, join a network marketing company and that really grew and developed um, my self-confidence, my self-worth, because they focused on what we do daily as a habit. And uh, not to jump into um, a different part of the story, but, you know, kind of uh, growing into um, uh, how, what led me to write my book is I met a book coach <clears throat> a few years, well, about four years ago, and uh, we walked through writing it. And as I was digging through some of my training that I had learned uh, you know, 20 years ago uh, with this business, I came across Benjamin Franklin's 13 virtues. And so I decided to add them to that. But um, so before writing the book, I was basically um, getting back into or developing, creating those uh, daily habits that keep us consistent, that keep us um, you know, mentally positive and uh, moving forward. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned Benjamin Franklin's uh, 13 virtual, and, and I was reading the description of your book, and you talk about the Benjamin Franklin's uh, 13 virtuals, and it would actually help people to uh, reduce their stress and live in a simpler life. It will develop the strength over time in facing adversity. What are those 13 um, uh, virtuals? Sure, sure. What I like to tell is actually the story of Ben Franklin when he was actually my kids' age, that late teens, early 20s. And just imagine, I mean, when you were in your late teens and early 20s, that's when I was making my stupid mistakes with, you know, having a baby and, and all of that. But um, when Ben was that age, they had amazing mentors. He lived in a Quaker community and they had amazing um, mentors that came beside them. And um, he paused in his life and realized he needs to focus on what, uh, how he could improve as his everyday life. And so he made a list of 12 things that he wanted to focus on. And I believe uh, that he took a trip with his mentor overseas because he was having difficulty working with his brother in the printing business. And his mentor said, let's go to Europe and uh, check, out, check out some new technology. And uh, it was at that time that he shared 
his 12 virtues and really defined them. And, uh, you know, it took months to get uh, to Europe by sea and then months to get back. And so he had time to really focus on that. And his mentor looked at his list of 12 and how he defined them. And he said, Ben, you're missing one because he knew Ben well. And if you know Benjamin Franklin's history at all, he was very uh, egotistical, had a, had a high ego, a high opinion of himself. And uh, the last one that the mentor added was actually humility. And humility is the shortest of all of the um, uh, 13 virtues. And let's see if I can find the definition of it. Humility, imitate Jesus and Socrates. That's the final and last one. And so he added it because he knew he needed it. My favorite three, I'm going to read all the, um, uh, the first words that he focused on. And then I'll read my favorite three. So the, all of them are temperance, silence, order, resolution, frugality, industry, sincerity, justice, moderation, cleanliness, tranquility, chastity, and humility. Those are all 13. And what he did was made a little card with a seven day checklist, you know, the old fashioned, you know, <laughs> writing it out. And um, <laughs> yeah, I, I like uh, paper too. And what he would do is um, Monday through Sunday, and he would review, uh, give himself a check where he was successful and give himself a minus where he knew he needed to improve. And he would focus on one every week. So he wasn't doing all of these all the time, but over time, when you're doing one every week, it will uh, set and get ingrained in that habit. But my favorites, and I'll read the definition of my favorite three, order. And this is what we need as entrepreneurs, uh, just kind of focusing on um, what we need to be uh, doing day in and day out. Order. I love his definition. Let all your things have their places. Let each part of your business have its time. So it's a little double. Uh, I, we teach our kids, you know, put your thing, put things in their place and you'll be able to find them again. Uh, everything should have a place and every place should have a thing. And then the other part of let every part of your business have its time. So that's more of the uh, scheduling part. Uh, I catch myself uh, trying to focus on something, trying to you know work on writing my next book, trying to uh, make some notes for my next presentation, getting prepared for this, and then jumping up and throwing in a load of laundry, jumping up and grabbing something to eat, jumping up. And it's that focus that you've got to practice. And it's, it's, it's a matter of... Um, getting into the habit of it. It doesn't come naturally. Everything we want to improve does not come naturally. Yeah. And I think a lot of uh, my, my viewers are actually in the startup business. So they're either in the business already, or they're starting up a business and they lost that. The, suddenly they are in the position where they can actually be their own boss. You don't have to clock in and out anymore. So what you said is perfect because you have, you do have to set up a business hour, even though you're working from home, right? This is my my hour, I close my office door and here I am, I'm on business hour. And, and I think it's a very clear distinction between this is my business life and that's my life life. Um, mm -hmm. so I love the word order. Yes, exactly. And we've got to remember that uh, sometimes we have to work with our own energy. Um, for example, my best uh, work, like if I want to do, you know, check emails and, you know, do some creative writing is in the morning. So I'll put my laptop in my, in my lap in my bed and work on, you know, getting that communication going in the morning. And then I like to take a, you know, leisurely breakfast. And, you know, if we're entrepreneurs, you know, we're not on the clock eight hours like we used to be with a job. And uh, I remember those days. And, um, and then my next energy spurt is, you know, over the lunch hour. And then in the afternoon, I like to, you know, kick back and sit outside in the sun, but you can be, you know, creatively thinking about your business. And then my next spurt is typically after supper, dinner, <laughs> I'm in the Midwest, we call it supper, but, um, you know, use doing, uh, you know, like six to 8 PM is a uh, good uh, creative time for me too. And it's a great time to be calling people as well, because usually they're reachable. So that gives you an idea of, um, you know, using your energy spurts as well. Don't try to, you know, shove it all into an eight hour day, like we uh, have been trained in the, uh, in the workforce. So the second one I really enjoy is industry. Again, it's related to uh, working, lose no time, be always employed in something useful, cut off all unnecessary actions. And uh, that just spoke to me 
um, it speaks to me all the time because sometimes I'll sit and scroll in my Facebook and we didn't have that, you know, 25 years ago, it was more like going and finding entertainment outside in the world. But if we're finding, um, you know, like going out and meeting people and, and we shouldn't always have our business hat on. I mean, we've got to be, you know, social and understand and connect with people, but yet have that listening ear on. And we probably all do as entrepreneurs, but have that listening ear on of, you know, where someone's struggling, where, you know, maybe you can, um, you know, offer your services or, you know, set up another meeting time, or what's even better is being able to introduce others to someone that, you know, um, so not being always, we call it verbally vomiting, but not be, be always uh, business when we're uh, connecting with people, but also, you know, not be, um, sitting and, uh, not listening or sitting and, um, just letting our mind wander in, in uh, negative things. So lose no time. I love that one. Yeah. I, I love because um, as a coach, you know, you're <laughs> really gifted in a way that we are good listeners. So you listen to people, to what they are looking for. And sometimes you have to meet them where they are um, just by listening to them. And I, I always encourage people to you know provide value. Don't look at what you get from them but look at how you are providing your service, providing your values to people that you are talking to. So it may not be business oriented. A lot of time, you know, sometimes maybe set up coffee times with people and just connect. Exactly. And me, I'm missing my coffee this morning. I'm doing water, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the third Benjamin Franklin uh, virtue that I really enjoy is tranquility. And I don't know about you, but uh, this whole time of uh, the setback, the quarantine, the quiet time, the shutdowns, whatever we're calling it, has really refocused me on thinking about the quiet time that I that I spend. And it's interesting that he has tranquility and he also has silence as two of them. Almost the same, but a little bit different, but remembering to uh, be still and uh, get away from the noise and get away and, and think. It'll be interesting to see how many uh, books launch out of this time, this quiet time, because people have had to step back and uh, be quiet and still and really get creative. One of my um, things that I had been putting off uh, all last fall was doing an online course, which we'll talk about after a bit. And I was able to put that together because I wasn't running around and, and going to all the meetings. We were, they were all sitting at home. So tranquility is defined as be not disturbed as trifles or at accidents common or unavoidable. So this one doesn't necessarily focus on the being still, the silence does. But it, this one reminds us to not be, not get annoyed and not let our angers flare up, not let our peace be uh, pushed off. Uh, just like in traffic, if someone cuts you off, if someone throws you the finger out the window, if uh, someone is just uh, irritating in, in traffic, you can choose to lose your peace over someone else, or you can choose to just slow down a bit, give them some extra space and think maybe they're dealing with something that is uh, a little bit over, um, over our understanding. Maybe they just um, left the hospital with someone in ICU and they're just completely distracted and they're just kind of weaving in and out of traffic and maybe they're just tearing up in their car. And um, maybe uh, you know they just got a, a cancer diagnosis at the hospital. Maybe uh, they're rushing to go rescue their child from an accident that's across town that we don't know about. So whenever we look at, when, whenever I look at uh, drivers, uh, I try to encourage people is, in, I mean, that's just one aspect of our life is driving. But when we're looking at like driving and we see somebody else Instead of, you know, getting aggressive, losing our peace and uh, lashing out, maybe we should, you know, say a little prayer, think about them and uh, you know, wish them well and just kind of back off, slow down and give them space rather than losing our cool. So that's what I love about tranquility that Ben Franklin, and this was before they were driving. This was when they were riding horse. So <laughs> it works in, it works in all areas. Wow. <laughs> driving horse. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there was aggressive driving back then. I don't know. <laughs> right? I love these virtual and these are great virtuals to have. Um, mm -hmm. Things, there's a time, there's a place in our life 
you know, that we do things and also understanding what, what is it, the relationship, the connection that we're building and being in that stillness, being just being at ease and with that tranquility, being who we are right here and now. So how mm-hmm. does, I'm, I'm curious, how does these 13 um, characteristic and character of virtue can actually help us in our life? Like, what's the benefit of, of cultivating them? The benefit is, again, uh, having that peace. And like you are a confidence coach. And um, I, when we first connected on Facebook, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a confidence coach too. <laughs> but being able to uh, reset uh, when we get uh, sidetracked and also, um, you know, build that confidence. So if we are just focusing on watching the news, watching the stuff that's spit at us, that is just fed us, we are going to sink back in that negative mindset. <clears throat> and I found myself uh, getting dr- dragged down into that with uh, the news and everything that's going on. And I get still and pull away from that. And uh, remember my order of losing no time and not being involved in that uh, negative barrage, but focusing on what we need to uh, set as daily habits to continue moving forward instead of sliding backwards. And it's okay to realize, geez, I've backslidden, you know, you take two steps forward and eight steps back and it's, it's okay. Just realize it and then step forward again. And so I go back to my virtues and I even bring them up in my radio show. Usually every month I do a a character challenge and uh, read the character virtue out loud and, uh, you know, find in my case, my faith, I find a Bible verse that goes with it. But um, it's, it's just something you can fall back on to be able to reset again and build that peace and confidence. I love it. Love it. Um, I think one of the things that you have mentioned is, that, well, first of all, you know, a lot of people think that, well, coaches, you know, health coach, wellness coach, coach sounds very woo woo. You know, we're in that space where people have that conception of, yeah, they must be all these happy people like doing doing their uh, meditation all day long, and they're like kind of woo woo. But if you look at what happened going through this pandemic, well, the coaches are actually the one who's actually cultivating and walking their talk. To, to deal with this pandemic, to, to cope with this pandemic. And, and we actually, like you said, a lot of us actually are working on that book, working on an online course. So I'm curious, what did you do during the pandemic? <laughs> What's out the there first- now? <laughs> What's available to people now? Right. Well, we're pretty fortunate and we're, you know, we've been in the news lately. I'm from South Dakota. So our governor did not uh, shut us down. We're one of, I think, the seven states that did not get uh, locked down tight. So really, um, our our city um, that I live in uh, shut down for four weeks. And but we were still, you know, pretty free to go wherever we want. It was just the there was certain businesses that were closed. And I, we laughed because we we did the 14 days. We were just kind of quiet and still, but we did you know some running around because in the Black Hills we've got just this amazing um, area to drive around in and uh, you know campgrounds and things like that. So I I tease uh, people. I said, yeah, once the you know March 13th, Friday the 13th hit, we got in a vehicle and we went driving around the hills because we were like, this is we're not going to do this. This is, we're not participating, but uh, we've been fortunate, you know, four weeks after we had a lot of, I was only uh, not quarantined, but uh, furloughed uh, back when I had a job. I was only furloughed for four weeks and I was back to work. And then I did some transitioning and switching, but yeah, I kicked in my um, online course. Uh, There was one thing, a little teeny thing. And if you look on my Facebook page, um, what I did was take quotes of my book and um, uh, rip them out into pieces of paper, just kind of a creative one. And, did did some snapshots of that and then added some print with uh, my uh, uh, website and my and my book title and it was just sitting on my on my desk forever just this pile of papers that I wanted to get creative and and uh, do this uh, basically photo shoot with my uh, quotes and I was able to just rip it out tear it out take some po- photos start editing it and uh, adding the a text on it and it took maybe an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting on my desk for almost six to nine months. It was ridiculous. So these these little things, these little piles that have been uh, piling up for months, probably even years, I was able to just go in and tackle it with you know within an hour. So those are some of the things that I did during um, my furlough time. But a lot of times we were just out and about and enjoying the outdoors, which a lot of people have been doing. So I hope I hope you have as well. Yeah. 
So, so tell, tell us about the online course. What is, what is that about? Sure. I wish I had the description right in front of me. I was, I, I failed in that, but uh, we can uh, catch that later. But it's called Eek to Excellence. And uh, when I was looking at uh, creating a course, I went back to um, a presentation that I've done a couple of times. And we sometimes uh, are in that beginning phase, like I was with that low self-esteem. And usually when you face life, it was eek or, you know, like a mouse. So sometimes I'll go, uh, I'll use a picture of a mouse and an elephant because we're all used to that. And we start out at that as that little bitty mouse. Now, sometimes we feel like a, uh, an elephant and we fake it till we make it. But inside, we've got that teeny little eek way down in there. And we may uh, think we're confident, but not so much. And then what I do is walk through some of the habits, some of the um, exercises that I do daily. And uh, it's something that you can do through the online course. And, and uh, you actually email me a few things of what you've uh, grown and developed. And then we um, go through a few more exercises. And it just sets you on that path of daily habits to grow into excellence. So I call confidence and excellence kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. I love that idea of building, just coming off from the small routine. And, and I think a lot of people have that um, thinking, that belief that how do I get confidence? And they want the confidence overnight. And I think you and I both understand that confidence is not something that you just get overnight. You already have it. It's about cultivating it. And I love the word cultivating because it, it means it implies that it's already there. You just have to uh, bring it out to the surface and, and bring it out to the light. Um, so I love the word cultivating and building these based on the small habits that the routines that we have in our lives. Where can people find you? Uh, my website is uh, deannabeckett.com. Facebook is deanna.beckett. So facebook.com, deanna.beckett. Uh, all my contact information is there. And uh, of course, uh, Instagram is Deanna Beckett. Everything's Deanna Beckett. Or um, now I'm on uh, Parlor, which is character coach. I'm kind of adjusting some things. So you could also uh, hunt for character coach as well. Mm -hmm. This is also a perfect timing to think about rebranding <laughs> or branding. Right. Yes. Right. That quiet time. <laughs> There's so much that we get out of this pandemic that we, we learn um, so much by doing these little routines and cultivating our characters. Exactly. If, if you were to share one last thing with the audience that they can walk away from, from today's conversation, from your story, from your journey, what would that be? I always encourage people to seek peace. It's down deep inside each and every one of us. It's just a matter of building it and chasing after it with all your might, choosing it each and every time that you feel that uh, fester up, that, uh, that anger, that irritation, that annoyance, and just being able to step back and rethink uh, the other person's point of view or uh, rethink you know, what's going on outside of us. And then just step back, take a breath, and uh, re refocus on what we need to be concentrating on rather than reacting uh, to a circumstance that uh, we can completely control our reaction to. Mm -hmm. And I think one last thing I wanted to add too is uh, whether it's Benjamin Franklin, whether it's you or me, there at one point in our life, we all needed someone to guide us through that process because we're stuck. I, there's someone just to be there to shine a light in our lives. And, and I think you mentioned mentor, Benjamin Franklin had a mentor. Like, I think if I were to leave anything for, from today would be who is the mentor in your life? Like who is there to guide you through this whole process? Who can be there and just really stand there and be by your side? And sure. you guys can find Deanna at deannabeckett.com. Don't forget that. <laughs> so a mentor, in, a mentor in my life is uh, actually quite a few authors um, because uh, we don't do a lot of in-person stuff anymore. And so there, there's four of them, Jesus, Joel, Joyce, and John. And uh, uh, of course, Jesus, but Joyce uh, Meyer, I listen to a lot of, Joel Osteen and uh, John C. Maxwell. So those are my mentors. They're all J mentors. So there's not particularly one. So I encourage, you know, 
people, my kids, find somebody you connect to that is positive and keep listening to them and um, emulating what they are doing. Yeah. Having faith is uh, very important. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Deanna, for coming to the show. I had a great time. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, well, Thank you everyone for watching this episode and join me next week on Wednesday at eight o'clock with another episode of Live Coffee Talk where I bring you love, courage, and connection. So have a great day and think about your 13 virtuals. What are they? And what are more important to you? 